Thank you for the opportunity to speak here again. I was here last year together with my colleague from the regional association and we talked about uh, how we can together transform the whole region. And that will be my claim as well today. So uh, the presentation might slightly differ from uh, my predecessors uh, in a way that we, as a public company, um, are moving towards a, a broader engagement into urban transformation from this side of the uh, river recovering and uh, going into many other aspects, which I shall detail right now. And uh, first of all, to give you a brief contextualization where we are, uh, we are in the western part of uh, Germany, in the rural metropolis it's called, it's uh, North Rhine-Westphalia. And we already heard about it's a highly densified region um, with broadly two main areas that we are, where we are public uh, water providers. Um, that would be uh, in this picture, the green and the blue area. So um, we are for the region actually um, responsible for the whole water cycle and that for more than 100 years. So basically 120 years right now, uh, 120 something years. So we have a large history as well um, that is directly linked to the region. Uh, the region is a highly, was a highly industrialized region. So with many uh, comparisons made to the, uh, yeah, to the region where we are right now, the upper Silesian region and Katowice being uh, the center of it. So it's, bright, it's, it's pretty comparable actually the two regions, uh, the historical past and uh, the many uh, path dependencies that arise from this historical past as well and the challenges uh, upcoming as well. So um, we are actually responsible for the whole water cycle that I already mentioned. We have two broader catchment areas, that's the Emscher and the, and the Lippe. That's why we have this big title, Emscher Genossenschaft and Lippe Verband. So uh, both of them, we are the Germany's largest uh, water provider uh, with a focus in wastewater treatment, but with a larger portfolio, which we're explaining right now. And uh, we are a public sector entity. That means uh, we have a cooperativist vision. Uh, so that's a member structure that embodies all the municipalities of the Emscher being 16 and also the larger districts, but also industrial members. So that means it's a whole regional cooperation uh, where we have a very, um, equitative distribution of the fundings made by every municipality and put it all together that uh, also uh, makes it possible actually for large for long term investments uh, when it comes to transforming the region. Uh, beyond uh, the industrial partners, we also have many uh, partners from the civil society. So um, yeah, it's a big, it's a kind of broader vision, which I try to deliver here uh, from when it comes to uh, water management and rainwater management being also one of the components. Uh, here the uh, small picture of our portfolio that has been increased during the last years. First of all, we are kind of technical cooperation. Uh, so that means we are mostly engineering that uh, might suit you because most of you I think are engineers or have engineering background. Uh, we are run right about uh, 1,900 employees and uh, we are still searching for new employees so please apply. Um, I think it's a very broad field um, where, where we are engaged in. But next to the uh, wastewater management, uh, we are also responsible uh, for uh, flooding protections, for the management of the polar areas. It's directly linked to uh, the floodings and uh, stormwater management, which is the main topic of the event, uh, which I am going to emphasize a bit my presentation. Uh, directly linked to this is climate change adaptation. We all heard about the topic of Sponge City. I think uh, we're trying to implement the concept of Sponge City in the whole region. And beyond of this, we have kind of a lot of social uh, engagement as well and uh, educational uh, things to be done when it comes to create a more a higher awareness how to use uh, water as a, yeah, as a meaningful resource. And I think this has changed the last uh, 20 years. Uh, once, once it was a very functional resource, rainwater, right now we have, uh, taken, we have to take into consideration that it's a very valuable resource. And so a lot of awareness has to be created, especially when it comes to climate change adaptation. Our biggest project uh, during the last 30 years was the Emscher conversion. That means uh, she has already mentioned it. Uh, I think uh, that's why I'm running out of topics. Uh, it means that we actually have created a channel, a sewer channel underneath the surface in a depth of 40 meters round uh, until, from, from 40 to 50 meters uh, under the ground. 
and uh, where all this sewer is running to, that means a wastewater from the companies, industrial companies, but also from the households, while we are recovering the rivers on the, the water bodies actually on the surface. That means uh, the Amish is about 70, 80 kilometers long, but we have a lot of a big network of uh, tributaries. Tributaries sum up around 350 tributaries. That makes it also very important uh, as a regional actor to intervene actually in the region because we are actually not a kind of regional developer, but uh, we have the leg legitimacy to intervene from the water side. Now you have to understand that. So uh, first of all, we are into infrastructure, technical infrastructure. That means the construction of the channel underneath uh, the surface and with all the things linked to it. But also right now that this project has finished, uh, it has finished actually more or less uh, at the end of the last year. We are trying also to make a broader engagement on the surface because as you know, uh, nobody's really interested in our region uh, about infrastructure, technical infrastructure that's underneath. So that means uh, many people have been running, seeing the bulldozers running over all their neighborhoods, making a lot of noise, but nobody sees actually the real benefit of the region when it comes to transformation. So that uh, actually made us uh, aware that we have to engage in a broader master plan uh, that has been set up in 2006, which goes far beyond uh, the technical infrastructure because uh, we are right now into more redesigning the landscapes from the kind of blue and infrastructure side on. So creating parks, creating green areas, green corridors, but also cycling paths and stuff. Strategy collaborating with the Ministry of uh, Cities and uh, closely through the Ministry of Environment, which is our main funder. Um, the biggest project is uh, the Amsha Conversion. It's Europe's largest infrastructure project. It's also the worldwide biggest uh, river recovering project. I've uh, learned it recently. So um, uh, it might offer a lot of opportunities, uh, what can be done in the future for us. But let's make it clear. I think we are not talking about a so only success story, but also we made many failures in our region. I think that's why we're all here in this international dialogue, because the region actually has been completely destroyed because of the industrial use. And right now it's being rebuilt. And I think the transfer idea would be to have a very holistic picture in our days, not to open the construction site three times, for instance, to build the channel, then build the sponge city, then then build mobility stuff and then build, uh, for instance, new infrastructure for the electricity, but to do it all once. And I think that's maybe the learning from what we have done uh, the last 30 years, because I think best practices are right, but it's always, it's always a freezing time in uh, in history. And that's not also cannot be applied to many other examples because we have made many mistakes as well as a whole region. So right now we're trying to re recover it. Uh, this uh, project being the backbone actually of our investment, it's about 5 billion euros that has been invested during the last 30 years, mostly money coming from the EU, but also from the regional uh, state. Uh, and uh, we have a return, actually a takeoff, economic takeoff of 30 billion euros as well. So that means uh, the 5 million invested right now brought into 13 billion to our region, which we have to uh, understand is a really was a long time neglected region in Europe uh, or in Germany in, in general, because it was a highly industrial past uh, with many uh, path dependencies that uh, make it very difficult for uh, enterprises to invest. But right now this has changed. And back at the 90s, the idea was of structural change. That means uh, before we prepare the terrain for the change for the companies and people to settle in, put middle class, middle class, upper class uh, people, we have to first recreate the landscape. And that's where we had this uh, Emscher conversion and the landscape transformation as well. Overall, it's more technical terms. It's uh, 460, 36 kilometers of sewers have been constructed and uh, Lots uh, of them, of the water bodies of the tributaries as well, have been uh, renaturalized. That means it's a, a pre, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not renaturalized site, but it's it's pretty close to a renatural site. That we have this many parts of the River Emscher is now re meandering. Now. So we, before we had this kind of channel, this open sewer channel. Right now, the river is restored, and we have this re meandering of the river where it is possible, where there are no settlements left and right to the Emscher. Um, we are free of wastewater since 2021. That means that you can theoretically drink our water when it comes when it comes to the Rhine, but I won't recommend it. But uh, okay, but it should be pretty clean. It's a fourth step of uh, biological cleaning. That means uh, it's uh, cleaned of medicaments and uh, yeah, antibiotics, for instance. Né? So I think it's um, it's pretty clean. Uh, for you, more technical uh, stuff. I think right now is uh, what is actually this new Emsha system about. Like I told you, uh, we have a total length of about 60, uh, is it like 51 kilometers of uh, the sewer system? And it's underneath the surface, it means uh, in the depth of 40 kilometers uh, in uh, all already built settlements, uh, in neighborhoods and municipalities. 
uh, from 40 meters to 50 meters because we have a high difference uh, from the source to the uh, delta, which is the Rhine. So we have to actually have a couple of pumping stations in, the, in, in between uh, the way uh, from the source to the delta. The same applies for the treatment stations. We have four uh, bigger, larger uh, decentralized uh, wastewater treatment plants, some of them being completely autonomous when it comes to energy autosufficiency, made of uh, solar thermic drying of the uh, residuals actually um, uh, from the wastewater. And uh, we are right now uh, trying to implement a system that we use uh, the, the, the heat actually from the wastewater in the channels, uh, in the big channel, uh, the Emscher sewer that 50 kilometers, but also the channel of the tributaries uh, that makes it completely autonomous. Uh, I don't know, maybe in the next 10 years would be the next step. And uh, right now you see here a couple of pictures uh, how it is right now, the restored Emscher. I'll invite you to go to the region. It really changed. Uh, some of you might not, not know the uh, rural metropolis, but right now it's uh, it's got pretty green right now. And with all the kind of recovered uh, where water bodies like here, we see uh, how it has changed because before it was an open sewer channel, like you know, in other cities, uh, we still have many of these open sewer channels worldwide. So um, this is really kind of a fundamental change it has undergone our region. Um, we also see at the picture in the lowest uh, on the left side what we closely work with uh, yeah, urban development. That means we take water as the point of departure for uh, new settlements to be built for the middle and upper classes. Now. Always take care about gentrification. That's a problem that uh, we may face because uh, our real estate prices might rise, might, might rise as well in this region. So we have to take care about that. But all in all, we want to uh, draw more attention uh, for investments both of uh, real estate companies and also industries to resettle in this region. That's why we closely work together with the Ministry of State, uh, Ministry of uh, City. Okay, our next chapter actually, right now that we have more or less finished uh, the, uh, the construction of the Emscher channel, channel and some still some kilometers have to be begun when it comes to river restoring, we are into climate change adaptation. That brings us maybe to our topic of uh, the conference. So it's all about the uh, concept of sponge city name that we are trying to implement in the region. And the port of departure was uh, in 2019 when we had the rural conference. Uh, I know the rural conference might not be similar for you. It's a big structural program uh, with investment by the EU, but uh, also with the state government uh, that tries to actually prioritize certain projects, uh, one of them being uh, climate change adaptation. So climate change adaptation, I don't have to show, this, show you the pictures, it's droughts and it's uh, heatings. This year was pretty bad for heatings with many uh, deaths as well. Uh, which is not that common in, in media, but uh, there were many deaths. And last year there was the floodings with all the very uh, billionary, uh, billionary actually damages made to our region where we can get more prepared to that. And that's our mission right now to make the cities, uh, the whole region climate change ready. We started it at, a, at the scale of like our uh, Emscher members. That means um, we were once at 15, 16 communities right now. Uh, it has been expanded to 53 municipalities covering uh, the whole rural metropolis region, uh, pretty heterogeneous they are rural areas, but mostly of them are uh, also urban areas where we have uh, one uh, quarter billion of euros from uh, EU and also from the state government to implement uh, the kind of climate change measures in the region. The purpose is actually to create the water sensitive, attractive and sustainable region. You see here, it's a very holistic picture, I think, that is drawn. It's not only be about climate change, but also making it more attractive, maybe. attractive in terms of investments, attractive in terms of well-being for the people living in there. Because we all know that we have to address climate change measures, climate change adaptation in the city, and we have to do it right now. And it's pretty, do it, pretty easy to do it today. Uh, it's, it's easier than uh, in maybe 10 years. The climate change measures are all known to, known to you. Maybe I think it's uh, most common uh, practices are green surfaces and green roofs and green facades, decoupling from the sewer system and tree regolas and stuff. We're closely working together uh, in the built environment uh, that already exists, but also in new settlements like new housing structures and stuff, trying to create this kind of multifunctional spaces, which also serve for retention, uh, retention when it comes to floodings. The whole river restoring project is a kind of very big measure against floodings because uh, when we create this kind of meandering river, recreate actually the Amsha, then we have a lot of space actually then the river can transport, can actually uh, when it rains a lot it can go left and right to the Amsha and uh, instead of flooding the neighborhoods. And um, yeah, the idea behind is the sponge city concept. Um, 
And the difference would be that we do try to do it in a regional approach, because you all have to know that all municipalities have their climate change adaptation plans, but they don't work together. So the, our appeal would here be to have a kind of transformative governance also implemented. That means we're trying to uh, yeah, have a reunion in one common goal, that means climate change adaptation, and we're trying to see which actually are the gains for all municipalities when when they work together? It's it's mostly it's some for some it's kind of prestige that we are now a region that is really uh, turning into a climate change ready city and one of the greenest regions in Europe. The other one is fundings. Now, if you apply for EU fundings, you have to know that EU usually gives the money to regions and not to municipalities. That means you have higher chances of uh, getting more money actually to climate change adaptation and a uh, quarter billion euros only being the beginning, I hope, uh, and uh, that other programs can also be applied for when it comes to getting into this regional idea of climate change adaptation. And we do it with the Amsterdam Genossenschaft because municipalities usually don't have the resources actually, human resources to get one people, one person uh, actually to work on this climate change in the city because that involves usually also that you have to work between different departments in the city. That means one of the infrastructure, one of the climate uh, department, one other of the state, of the city department, but they usually don't work together. So we put people in there, either we get uh, resources in our own house, in the Amsterdam Genossenschaft, or we kind of send one person in there and we try to have this kind of, as a kind of messenger, as a kind of uh, uh, Ambassador would be the better term uh, to get different people together from different units to make this one concept in a holistic view that makes sense because we don't have, want to actually open the site, the construction site, three times, like I told. But when, for instance, we create a new channel, we also try to build the concept of Sponge City, also trying to get into new mobility concepts, digitalization and stuff. So we have to bring together different people because usually in Germany we have climate change adaptation ma uh, manager as it's called but it's not working, working very well so we're trying to get these people into the cities or uh, have our own department for that. Uh, the biggest two goals where we also are measured for are 20% uh, less stormwater runoff to wastewater treatment plan. The other one is 10% more evaporation. So we're addressing basically the both um, phenomena here of climate change adaptation, that's sports and it's uh, heat islands. I think that's a good term we have already done today. It's a uh, heat hotspots that we have in many cities. And these criteria also overlap with kind of socioeconomic lower neighborhoods. That means we have socioeconomic lower neighborhoods which which are usually in a depression. That means uh, they are very subject to floodings and it also heats up a lot when it com when it compares to other uh, regions and neighborhoods that are better run off that are for the upper class family. So we're trying to get into these focus areas of our first investments of the quarter billion euros to see how these actually two aims are achievable in the next 10 years. But that's where we are measured fullness so we have to um, we, have, we, have to, we have to attain this, uh, these goals. And uh, yeah, the idea behind this, I think that's my point, is first of all, uh, we have to think more regionally in a more kind of holistic view. Why? Because actually, uh, when you apply for a regional funding, uh, you have to do it together and you always have to appeal how the population can also work together. Usually it's fundings, né? so we are also trying to get into the household and say, okay, which are actually the benefits when you build a green roof, when you decouple from the uh, sewer system, when you, uh, you know, draw away all this, it's called stone gardens in Germany, and it's, uh, they are heating up, it's, it's kind of garden made of stones in your, in your, just, uh, in your playground of stuff, but you have to do it, you have to have actually a green garden because it, it won't heat up, but people usually are not aware of that, so we have, create a couple of simulations that uh, simulate how much, how much are their gains actually. And they got the programs funded. So it's, uh, it's, it's, I think it's beneficial for all. But the idea behind of climate change adaptation, which we're trying to implement right now, it's to get to a broader goal. That means transformation of the city in a sustainable way. That means a new master plan is being created right now, uh, which tries to embrace all the topics that I raised right here. It's ecology or biodiversity, let's say, like the economics, education, culture, it's creation of employment and stuff, it is tourism, it's participation. So we have to all think together because only uh, as a region right now, I think you can change many things. And uh, that's where we are trying to enter with this kind of idea of transformative governance with a more bottom-up approach instead of being kind of dictated by one or a company. For, uh, it's, it's, it's not very well accepted. So we're trying to build this together. And uh, that's maybe the future of the next 10 years to have this kind of uh, sustainable master plan set up in the uh, region of the Emscher, but in a, uh, put it in a broader way also in uh, the whole rural metropolis. So that's basically it. And I thank you for the attention and 
if there are questions afterwards, I would be greatly to answer them.